now be recorded. Okay, so in previous session, we discussed uh, of what is Apex and of why do we need to go for Apex. And in a nutshell, we understood, okay, Apex is a strongly typed object-oriented programming language. Okay. So why I said Woods? So because it uh, satisfies the Woods concept like inheritance, uh, polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation. And I'll show you how this uh, Woods features we are satisfying. How we are satisfying inheritance, how we can do the inheritance uh, in Apex, encapsulation and abstraction uh, and polymorphism, we'll see that part. Okay. So before go, going to theory part, let's see how I'm going to write a Apex class and to write a Apex class, what the things I need to be done. So before I start, if you have any question, let me know. Do you have anything from previous session? Or uh, everything is okay? Okay, if we have no questions, then we can continue now. See, uh, when I say class, what does it mean? So simply, I can say it may be Apex class or Java class, any class. So in the object-oriented programming concept, when, you, when somebody say class, simply you can understood it's a blueprint. Okay, or more generic, I can say it's a concept. Okay, I'll come to technical definition. It's a blueprint or concept of something which can be represented as a real world entity. Okay, as a real, real world entity. What does it mean? Let's see what I'm going to do here. Let's understand what is the class exactly. Okay, let me make a diagrammatical representation for you. So let's see. Let's consider uh we have something like so some land i have okay i have some land okay we are we all are friends we have some lands in a good place where i want to build some apartments okay so this is the three different lands we have okay so now what do we need to do we need to build some apartments now for making the apartment what we will do now i i'll continue everything with this example to make you understand the concept of class concept of object oriented concept okay so now what happened when i want to build one apartment what we need first so first we'll go to uh, some architect okay so that architect will give some kind of uh, blueprint or i can say some kind of plan okay building plan we can do some kind of building plan we'll get okay as for building plan let's consider as per the area or the size of land we have we are going to get some kind of a blueprint like this okay just consider this is a blueprint okay where i'll have okay one um, hall and then there is an entrance here okay and uh, one back back entrance here and there is a, in one room one some kind of uh, blueprint we got and uh, as per this plan or as for this plan what we have received from an architect we are going to make the building here okay now you tell me this blue print or building plan plan what we have received it does this have any physical existence it's just in pen and paper there is no physical existence this is just a plan or a blueprint of what we are going to build am i correct so I mean, if you got a architect, architect, one plan from one architect, uh, are you going to stay in there? No. To make this uh, some physical entity, or to make this uh, um, with a existence, then we have to construct my home, correct? Am I correct, Maras? Yes. Okay. So now, in this blue print, what we have, okay, it will tell, okay, so let's see there is one thing called building plan okay and inside this there will be something like okay uh, number of uh, room okay so so square feet how much square feet area okay so what is like what type of color we are going to make the, the painting what we're going to do okay and how we are going to do it this is a commercial area the behavior like this is a commercial plan or this is a office area going to be in, or this is a residential 
all the things we are going to make under this plan simply this plan is going to contain all these things right so this is going to do it but if you see this is just a generic plan what we have based on this plan i may build multiple buildings so i may have this one i can build one apartment which let's see man is going to build this apartment okay so same way i am going to build some commercial area here okay and uh, lok is going to build some kind of uh, office area here so now you see this area have some physical in existence somebody can see what is this one okay so now the when you say class it's nothing but it's just like a blueprint okay and the building what we made it's nothing but the physical existence of this plan or this blueprint this is called if you convert to this a physical existence which so going to take some some kind of uh, location okay some kind of location then that we call as this part what we made the physical existence of my planning or from of or my blueprint that we call as object okay so i'll i'll relate it with technical concept how we are going to do it okay this is nothing but i can tell my class so class nothing but it's just a blueprint okay or a concept or, or a concept which have no physical existence but when you create an object of it there is a some kind of physical existence of it for example let's go to a very basic example okay let's see i will tell uh, one one class okay uh, person if i say person so person what will have the person name will have person age will have okay person gender will have okay and then what is going to happen then we will have okay person's behavior if they how will they going to behave okay some kind of uh, behavior okay let's uh, okay. now this is if you see this is just a concept person is nothing but a concept so if this person have and no physical existence it's just a concept of the things where wherever i can say it, no physical existence am i correct so whenever you say person there is no physical existence we have so but whenever we say uh, lokesh or whenever we say uh, devasis or mohesh that time i can say we have a physical existence so if person we can consider as a as a class then who are going to be object who have the physical existence nothing but i can say okay there is somebody lokesh who is a person okay there is somebody let's say uh, manas who is a person okay so lokesh have a name lokesh have a age lokesh have a gender lokesh have a particular behavior same way manas have all those terms am i correct so class nothing but you can say it's just a template or blueprint from which we are going to create the object in a technical definition we can say a class nothing but is a template or or some blueprint from where we are going to build some object am i correct okay so now when you say object is nothing but it's exactly one instance of the class object is nothing but it's an instance of the class like so in this example if you see i have built multiple apartments so there are nothing but one one instance of my plan my building plan correct same way there are multiple persons okay name is lokesh and manas who are one instance of this person template or i can say from the person behavior okay that i cancel like this am i correct or any confusion on this part see whenever you get any doubt you can stop me you can ask me i want you should have completely fundamental clear and you can um, you want i i want you be to expert that's my my motto only okay whenever you will have any question stop me and ask me so in this one line definition i understood so 
class is nothing but a blueprint or template from which we are going to create some real world entity nothing but um, nothing but we call that as object that's fine yes so now whenever i say this person if you see uh, this if you go to example of this building what we have we have number of room we have square feet we have what kind of color we want to give so it is a commercial behavior this is office behavior or residential same way when i come to the person template or blueprint or class i can say they have name they have age they have gender and some behavior so we have like man can person can work or not that's the behavior of the person correct so now so every class for you to consider we have two different kind of thing to be keep inside the class okay so that means a class can contain the data member if it is a technically data member and class can contain like a member method we'll understand what is data member and how we need to create and what is this member method we'll and we'll discuss about this so simply in a not cell we can say so class is a blueprint or concept from which we are going to create some real world entity and a class can contain some data member and member methods okay so now when i'm saying class can contain data member method and how it looks like and how i can create a class what is the syntax of creating a class we'll see how to create a class what is the syntax of creating a class so whenever i want to create a class what i need to do so i'll give a complete syntax of the class then we'll 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 parse it in the basic level how we're going to understand it so whenever you are going to write a class always remember you have to use keyword class okay so the complete syntax is going to be my asset specifier i will discuss what is this asset specifier and why do we need it okay then we can define uh, some extra properties here i will tell what is this extra properties okay then we can define with the keyword class we have to use the keyword class then you give your class name it may be a person it may be billing name it may be purchase order it may be account batch anything a okay, class name then uh, my class may implement some interface i will discuss interface what is in upcoming sessions for the for the syntax perspective i am saying my class may implement some interface see what i am going to keep inside the square bracket it's optional okay implement interface so i may not need to implement interface always so if you have written batch batch affix any time you will write in future and as you know some 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 telephones so we implement some specific interface okay i will talk about interface don't worry about it what is interface why do we need i'll talk everything okay we may implement interface okay or we may extend some other class name this is nothing but if you see the concept of inheritance if we may extend some other class also okay it's also optional we can may ex extend the other class names then you give the curly bracket and inside the curly bracket we may define my data member and my member method two thing okay so when i say asset specifier there are multiple asset specifier we have which we can say what is asset specifier we may have private asset specifier let me make a note of everything we may have a private asset specifier we may have public asset specifier i will tell what is asset specifier and why do we need private we may private public we may have global asset specifier and we may have uh, okay private we in the self source we use private public global so now what's going to happen on this part so asset specifier nothing but it defines where my class can be accessible so where my class can be accessible so now what happen let's consider this is my self source account okay so i have uh, in this self source i have one namespace defined okay and uh, forget the namespace i in, if i am going to write one class here and i want that class can be accessible any like inside anywhere on this org then i can define it as a public access specifier so now anywhere in the namespace or if you don't have namespace i can say anywhere in the 
or if you want your class can be accessible then we can define it as public okay if i want that class or or any data member or member method what we have i want that can be accessible only inside defined namespace only inside defined uh, life, life cycle then we can search private for example i have one let me make a diagram diagram for you once again see when you not, not understand stop me and ask me okay let's see this is my complete org okay if i write public anything in the public then it can be accessible all over here okay but let's see inside this i have defined one class here okay and inside this class i have one more class i have defined as a nested class i want this nested class only can be accessible in this area then simply i can define it as private okay and the moment you define anything as global so it can be accessed anywhere in this org and also outside of this org for example if i want to integrate two different system let's say i have another system where i'm going to integrate okay so i want the class what i have defined it can be accessible outside of my org that time we need to define the global so that we talk about access specific so it is nothing but uh anywhere in org and also outside of the org can be accessible okay so access is nothing but we can define uh, private public global okay now you can see any question i'm just starting with very basic concepts okay so you know, thinking everything should be start from the scratch so based on that we are doing it okay so whenever i am saying the external properties what we can define in the class level for apex programming so now in the external properties either you can define virtual okay yeah you can define abstract you can define with sharing you can define without sharing so this virtual abstract with sharing without sharing i am not going to talk now just to remember uh, these things also we can define in the class level when you come upcoming session i will give the definition of each one one by one why do we need with sharing why you don't need without sharing when we can define virtual and abstract that i will talk in upcoming sessions one by one okay so then you use implements keyword here implements if you have an interface to implement then you can use interface name here or if you want to extend the uh, some class the class for inheritance purpose i can use extends class name then inside this i can have data member and member method okay so now this is the very basic things okay so whenever we need to use in we will use to interface to be implemented that time i will come to virtual part when i will give the example of inheritance uh, or my abstraction class i'll come to abstract part okay and whenever i'll come to security layer then i'll talk about my with sharing and without sharing so now this point just uh, remember the keywords okay but we'll talk about this in detail in the upcoming sessions that's fine okay so now we understood class nothing but it's one template or blueprint from where we can in we can create an real world entity nothing but object and my class can contain the data member and method and when i want to create a class i need to give the access specifier then my class class name then inside the class name i can have my data member method let's consider the very basic example if i say calculator is a class okay if i say calculator is a class let's consider i want to make one class whose name is calculator so how i am going to define it okay so now nothing but so what we do First, to define where my class can be accessible. Let's consider this class can be accessible anywhere in the org. So simply I can do public class, then my class name. What is my class name? Let's consider I gave my class name as calculator. Okay. I don't want to implement any interface. I don't want to extend any other classes. Okay. I don't I do not want to do any inheritance. Simply I wrote public class class name. Then inside this, I'm going to define my data member and member method. What these are? 
So when I say data member to be defined, how I am going to define my data member and how I am going to define my member methods. Okay. So my class can contain data member and member method and also it can contain other class. So you may have heard if not then you will in the upcoming sessions I will discuss that also something like wrapper class or nature class that also we may have which nothing but one class can contain other class i'll i'll discuss that part also okay so yeah, what's going to happen on yes tell me so your data member is nothing but a variable right that's what you're saying right correct correct that's variable i'm coming to that part that i'm nothing but a very very that variable okay no. that's nothing but my data member member method nothing but my methods yeah my functions okay that that we can say so now so Data member. How I am going to define data member? So if if calculator is a class, what are the things going to be data member? Data member going to be my variables. What I am declaring for a class. Like in this apartment example, it can be how many number of room I am going to make. What is my square foot size? Okay. What is the color I want to give to? And then commercial behavior. What I do? These are going to be my methods, my behaviors. So now you can say same thing. This behavior. Or work is my behaviors and these are my data members. So how I am going to do it? So now when I say data member, so how we are going to build this data member and what is going to happen? Or in the more um, generic terminology, you can say it's like a class variable. It can be a class variable. And also uh, this member method, you can say my class behavior. My class behavior. So how it's going to work on this part? Okay. So now, whenever I'm saying I want to create a calculator class, then what the things I'm going to build as a data member, and what the thing I'm going to build as a class behavior or member method? Okay. So now, whenever you want to declare a data member for this calculator example, let's see. I want to store two number, and I want to do the sum of that. So then a first member is going to be my number one my second member going to be number two if i say number one number two so what i can store here okay so one more point to remember class doesn't have any memory allocation but when you instantiate it when you create an object of it so we allocate some memory to that uh, object okay which have the, which have the physical memory existence okay which will have a physical memory address also so now I am going to define two numbers, number one, number two, which I want to add. So in this calculator, I am giving a behavior, nothing but I am going to do something called addition, one mathematical function. So how I am going to do it? So now, whenever you want to create a data member, how you create a data member? Data member, nothing but my class variables. And when you want to create any data member, there is also syntax to write. Let let me write the syntax here. How we are going to create data member okay let's see the syntax then we'll 